everybody and welcome to a new open class. Uh, this is open class number 144 and today we are going to be continuing a uh, previous uh, open class which was class 141 if I don't remember wrong. So we are going to talk today about ROS2 control. So how to integrate ROS2 control with a gazebo and with a gazebo simulation. So this is going to, to be the, the purpose of uh, today's class, ROS2 control. All right, so if you are interested in learning more about it, stay tuned. So uh, yeah, hello everybody and welcome. Uh, I hope that uh, we are going to have a great time during uh, this hour, more or less. So uh, yeah, let me know, not lose any more time and I'm going to go straight to the platform so that uh, we can start and I can also make sure that everything is fine. I can read the chat and so on. So let me switch uh, here to my computer screen. There we go. So uh, yeah, I'm going to come here to workshops and make sure that everything is uh, fine here in the live streaming. Okay, uh, I can see here Marco, Ricardo, Ryan, Ruben, hello everybody and welcome to this open class. So uh, yeah, let me know please here in the chat if everything is okay, if sound is okay, image is okay. Hello, Juan David, also, welcome. Everything is fine, he's saying Lidi. All right, perfect, then let's get started. So uh, in case that there are any uh, new newcomers to the class, uh, let's explain what to do. So what we're going to do, the first thing to do in order to, to be able to follow this class is to get the project that we are going to be working with. So how can you do this? Very easy. You just have to click in this button that you have right here uh, above the chat, which says fork and open the class project. So I am going to do this myself right now. Uh, all of you should do it as well. And this basically is going to create a copy of uh, the project into your account. Okay. So you are going to get a, uh, you're going to get a copy of the project for you and you are going to have it forever. Okay, not only for uh, for the class or no, no, you're going to have it forever. Okay, so you are going to be able to launch it uh, whenever you want in case that you want to review the material, go over it again, etc. You're going to have it there forever. Okay, then uh, so uh, as you can see, it's going to also automatically open it. All right, so you are going to be redirected to this screen, which is the Rushject uh, screen. Here you're going to see in the right side the streaming area with the, with the live stream and also the chat here in case that you want to, to comment anything, uh, give me any feedback, ask questions. I'm going to be reading you here in the chat, okay? So by now I'm going to, to hide the video so that uh, I have only the chat here. There we go. Okay, and then uh, you are going to have here also automatically opened the notebook. All right, as you can see, I have mine uh, here. So this is the notebook that I'm going to be following for today's class. So here you're going to find uh, everything that we are going to be doing, all the commands that I'm going to be executing, the code that I'm going to use. You're going to find everything that you need here, okay? So uh, yeah, this is the first step to get a copy of the project and to open it, all right? So far, so good. Have you been able to get the project to open it without problems? Yes, no. So the next steps, uh, yeah, so before starting, before actually starting, uh, let me, let me uh, talk a little bit about the requirements. So in order to be able to follow this class uh, properly, you should have a basic uh, knowledge of Linux, all right? Very, very basic. Uh, and it would be good also, not, not uh, mandatory, but it, it would be good to have a basic knowledge on ROS2, all right? For instance, in how to create packages, uh, how to compile, etc. It would be good because we are going to be doing some of this basic stuff. And as well about URDF, okay? We are going to be interacting a lot with uh, URDF files. All right, so uh, all these uh, required uh, knowledge, you can uh, get it here uh, and I've placed it here some links for you. So uh, just in case that you want to check our courses on all these subjects, so you are going to find a link here in the notebook direct to the courses. For instance, here you have the Linux for Robotics course, which is free. 
by the way. Uh, so in case that you want to 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 uh, get some knowledge on this, uh, you, you you have some missing knowledge on, on these topics, you can uh, have a look at our courses, which are going to help you for sure on this. All right. Then also uh, here I have left a link to the complete course on ROS2 control. Okay, the ROS2 control framework. So today we are going to be covering a little bit, a very very small part of this course. All right, ROS2 control is uh, it has many many things to be to be talked about, uh, many different topics uh, inside the ROS2 control free framework. And today we are going to be covering a very very small part of it. All right. So in case that you want to 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 uh, keep learning and get into more details about uh, the ROS2 control framework, you are going to find the full course, the complete course here in our, our academy. All right? Okay, so uh, yeah, we have done the introductions. Then as you can see, uh, this open class, the title for this open class is ROS2 control pipeline in Gazebo part two. Okay, so uh, this class is the second part of a previous class. Let me, let me find it here. So if you come here to the workshops, uh, here we have all the workshops that we do, all the open classes here. So here you can find number 141. It's the part one, okay? So in case you miss it, this uh, first open class, the, the part one of this open class, you can uh, later come here also and, and re review it, okay? In any case, in any case, uh, so uh, before starting, I'm going to do a very quick summary of what we did. All right. So basically, what we did was to uh, prepare a configuration file and prepare or update the URDF file of the robot in order to include ROS2 control support. Okay. So we are going to be working with this uh, simulation, this very basic uh, car, very tiny, small car simulation. It's the same simulation that we use it for part one. So we are going to keep working on this one. And uh, very quickly, what we did basically is to prepare the simulation. So, so we prepared the URDF of uh, the simulation and uh, we created also a configuration file to integrate this Gazebo simulation with ROS2 control. This is what we did uh, in the part one class. So uh, we are going to, to, to run a couple of commands here to test it. So first of all, we are going to run this command which is going to basically start the simulation, the Gazebo simulation, all right? So in order to execute commands, you are going to find uh, pieces of uh, the notebook, lines of the notebook like this one, where you are asked to execute something in a, in a web shell, in a shell. So uh, when w in, in order to execute uh, these commands, you need, of course, a shell, a terminal, a Linux terminal. So for this, you are going to come here to the first icon here in the bottom bar, and by clicking here, this is going to open a brand new shell, okay, where you can execute uh, Linux commands. So in this case, we are going to execute this one. So uh, in order to do so, what I recommend is that you directly come here to the notebook, select the, the command, and copy it, okay? And then you're going to be able to paste it directly here into the terminal, okay? You can also type it uh, by hand. It's going to take longer only, all right? So, uh, yeah, let me execute this first command then. And this is going to start the Gazebo simulation. It's going to spawn the robot, etc. It's going to take some seconds here until everything is started, as you can see. Here we are waiting for, us for the service, for the spawn service in this case. So after some seconds, don't worry if you get this message, it's normal. After some seconds, everything is going to be started normally. So let's wait for it. Okay, I can see that everybody uh, is all right here. You are saying yes, yes, yes. Perfect. Okay, so here everything is being loaded. The controller manager, Gazebo ROS2 control plugin has been loaded as well. And here it has been automatically opened a Gazebo window, as you can see, I have here. So here is where the simulation is going to appear. There we go. So you should get a simulation similar to this one, 
all right, with uh, the, an empty world, a gazebo empty world, and here in the center, the, the car that we are going to be using for, for today's class, all right? So, at this point, we have al al already loaded the gazebo ROS to control plugin, but the controllers have not been loaded yet, okay? So, for instance, we can, we are going to do some tests now, so let's open a new shell, and you can you can open a, another shell by clicking here on the on the plus icon here. This is going to open, as you can see, another shell. Okay, so we are going to leave this first one running, which it's the shell where we have the gazebo processes, the simulation processes running. So we are going to leave this running. Don't close it or anything because if you close it, it's going to terminate the simulation, and we don't want that. All right. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to open a, another shell, and here, for instance, we can start running some uh, ROS2 commands for, for seeing the current situation. For instance, let's just start with our ROS2 topic list. So here, uh, we are going to see uh, some topics, the topics provided by the simulation, and for instance, one of them is this joint states topic that we have here, but actually, if we have a look into this topic with our ROS2 topic echo, we are going to see that, that we don't have anything published yet. All right? So we are not getting any messages still here, okay? Why? Well, this is because the controllers have not been loaded yet, okay? So before, before continuing, let's have a look at, uh, very quickly, let's have a look at what we did in the previous class, okay? So for this, we are going to open the IDE, the code editor, which is this second icon that we have here. So if you click here, this is going to open, open this IDE, the, the uh, integrate, integrated development environment, which is basically going to give you access uh, in a graphical interface to all the uh, folders, packages, files, everything that you have in this project, okay? Then, in this case, we are going to be working in the ROS2 workspace. So, if we open this one and we go to the SRC folder, we are going to see here a couple of uh, folders. F the first one is Boxcar, which contains some packages inside it. And the other one is this Boxcar Bring Up. This is the package that we created in the previous class. In part one, we created from zero this package, okay? Then basically, what we did here was first to create this configuration file, this controller configuration.yalm. If we open this yalm file, this contains the controller's configuration. Okay? It contains here the controller manager, namespace, and inside it, we have the joint trajectory controller, which is of the type joint trajectory controller, and we have the joint state broadcaster as well. So we have these two controllers, okay? This controller is the one, the joint state broadcaster, is the one in charge of publishing into the joint states topic, okay? And this joint traje trajectory controller is in charge of controlling these joints. As you can see here, here we have the definition of this joint trajectory controller. It's in charge of controlling these two joints. So the left and the right wheels of the, of the car, okay? And it's going to control it to control the wheels through a position interface, okay? So we are going to send position values to this controller in order to control the wheels of the robot, okay? So we have these two controllers, the joint trajectory controller and the joint straight broadcaster, okay? And the trajectory controller is the one in charge of controlling the, the wheels of the car, and the joint state broad broadcaster is the one in charge of broadcasting the state of the joints. Okay? Makes sense? Then, besides this, we also did another thing, which is to do some changes to the URDF of the car. So, for having a look, a quick look into this, we are going to have to go here to the box car. Then we are going to open the box car description. And here we are going to open the robot folder, okay? Boxcar, boxcar description, and robot folder. 
Now, inside here, we are going to open the boxbot.chakro file. Okay? Box. Let me see. I'm seeing here. Stephen is saying, I'm clicking on the live open class. Now, button and it's not doing anything. Ah, there we go. Okay. So I understand it was solved, Stephen. Your issue? Are you here with us? Yes, okay, perfect. So yeah, we were, uh, we are, uh, if you have just arrived, we, were, we are uh, summarizing a little bit, doing a recap of uh, what we did in part one of this class, okay? Because this class, today's class, is part of a two classes series, part one and part two. Today we are in part two. So I am doing a, a, a quick recap of what we did in part one, all right? Then uh, besides this control, this, contro this control configuration file that, that we have already reviewed, the other thing that we did in class one was to add here to the URDF file of the robot the ROS2 control tag, this part here, okay? So we added this to the URDF file, all right? Then basically here, what we are do doing is to load the Gazebo ROS2 control plugin for Gazebo, all right? So this is going to integrate ROS2 control with Gazebo, okay? Very important. Then here we are specifying which joints of the robot are going to be controlled through the Gazebo ROS2 control framework. All right? So we have here, uh, of course, the two wheels, the right wheel and the left wheel. We specify also the, the, the command interface, which is going to be position, as I already said. Yeah, so we are going to be sending position values, position commands to the wheels in order to control them, okay? And we can specify here some extra parameters like, like the minimum and maximum angles that we want the, the, the wheels to, to, to rotate, etc. Also the which states we want to receive from these joints, etc. okay? So we, uh, we configure here the two joints that are going to be controlled through Gazebo, through the ROS2 control uh, framework, all right? And then, also, besides this, what we are doing here is to specify the Gazebo ROS2 control file name and the parameters file that we are going to be loading, which is this controller configuration.yalm. This parameters file that we created here. All right? Uh, Lidi is asking, where do we have to specify the value of the min and max angle? It's uh, here, Lidi. You are specifying it here. In the command interface, here you have both the minimum and maximum. Okay. Then this is basically what we did in class one, okay? So we, uh, we added all this code to the URDF file to integrate uh, the ROS2 control system with Gazebo, and we created the controller configuration file. All right? Then, this, all this is what we have launched right here. However, as you can see, we have actually loaded the Gazebo ROS2 control plugin very well, but we have not yet loaded. Well, we have indeed loaded the controllers, but we have not started them, activated them. Okay? So we have to do this manually now. This is what we are going to do right now. Okay? So in order to start the controllers, we are going to have to run these two commands. So let's just start with this one. We are going to copy it here from the notebook and paste it here to the terminal. ROS to control, load controller, set state, start. Okay? So we are going to load the controller and we are going to start it with this command. And which controller 
we are going to load and start the joint state broadcaster controller. Okay, so let's run this command first. And we get the message successfully loaded controller joint state broadcaster into state active. Perfect. And now we are going to do the same with the other controller that we had, which is the joint trajectory controller. So let's run now this command. Rush to control, load controller, set state, start, and joint trajectory controller. Let's run this. In order to load and start the joint trajectory controller, successfully loaded. Very well. So now we have loaded and started the two controllers manually with these commands. So for instance, now, if I check again the joint states topic, what is going to happen? Well, what is going to happen is that now I'm going to be receiving data here. So now I'm going to be able to see the state of the joints, as you can see. Right? Since I have loaded and started the joint state broadcaster, now I can access the state of the joints through the joint states topic. Yeah? Make sense so far? Yes? So this is the recap of what we did in part one, okay? So just to put you into situation, into context, okay, this is the context. So uh, from now on, we are going to start with part two of the class. Then what is going to be the goal of uh, this uh, part two? Very simple. Basically, what we are going to do is to create a launch file which is going to load and start the controllers, okay? Because for some situations, it might be uh, good to, to, to have to load the controllers manually, like we did right now with these commands, okay? But in most of the cases, you are, you are going to want to launch the simulation and load the controllers and start them, everything uh, at the same time, okay? So this is what we are going to do right now. We are going to create a launch file which is going to launch the simulation and at the same time is going to load and start the controllers, okay? This is the purpose of this class. So let's go for it, okay? Then, uh, yeah, so at this point you can already, if you want, you can stop the simulation, okay? Because uh, we are going to be creating a new launch file, a different launch file to, to start the simulation. So you can stop it already. Then let's get to the uh, notebook. And we are going to start here with the section number one, which is create a launch file for loading the controllers. Okay? Great. So the first thing that we are going to do is to create a launch folder inside our package. Our, let me minimize uh, this now. So in uh, in the boxcar bring up package, minimize also this. In the boxcar bring up package is where we are going to create our uh, new launch file. So first of all, we need to create here a launch folder, right? In order to place our launch file. So this is what we are going to do right now. You can do it directly uh, here from the from the code editor if you want with a right click here and new folder, for instance, or you can do it with commands like it is explained here in the notebook. I'm going to do it with commands right now. So let's go here to, to the package, boxcar bring up, and we are going to create a launch folder with the mkdir Linux command, okay? So now we are going to see a launch folder appear here, okay? As you can see, excellent. So now we are going to go inside this launch folder with the cd command, cd launch, and now we are going to create our launch file, which it's going to be named myrobot.launch.py. So let's execute this command, touch myrobot.launch.py. This is going to create this file inside the launch folder. So let's execute this command. And now you can see here, this new file has appeared. So at this point, if uh, you open this file by do double clicking here, you are going to see that the file is empty, okay? So what we are going to do now is to 
put content into, into this file. Well, before that, what we are going to do is to use the gmod command in order to give execution permissions to this file, okay? To make sure that we can execute it. So let's also copy this command and execute it. There we go. Okay, so now we are uh, properly set up. So what we are going to do now is to actually put some code into this file. Okay, we are going to create, to add the code for the launch file. So you have the code here in the notebook. So what we are going to do right now is to copy the code from here, from the notebook, directly. Let me come here. We are going to copy it and paste it into our file. So let's select all this uh, code, copy it. I am doing it with Control C, with the shortcut. And now I'm going to paste it here into my file. There we go. OK. Excellent. So now what we are going to do is to review a little bit what's going on here. OK, so what are we doing in this launch file? Let's go step by step. So uh, well, first of all, here at the beginning, you can see all the import statements. So we are importing different things, uh, uh, classes, functions that we are going to be using. OK, so uh, we have all the imports here. For instance, we are including the execute process, which we are going to see in a moment what, what it is for, the register event handler, etc. OK, then, OK, so we define the generate launch description function for our launch file, OK? And then we start here uh, with the actual code. So uh, first of all, we are using this get package share directory function, which of course we are importing for here. You can see the import here. So we are using this function get package share directory in order to get the path to this package. Yeah. So we are going. We are getting here the path to the boxcar gazebo package and the path to the boxcar description package. Okay. Now. I am creating the start world launch description. Okay? And inside here, what I'm doing is to join, to append the path of this package, boxcar gazebo, plus launch, plus the name of the launch file. So basically, what I am doing here is to store into this variable the path to this launch file this start world launch.py file. Okay, so I am getting the full path to this launch file. Okay? And I am doing this because I am going to be using this launch file to start an empty gazebo world. Okay? So basically what I am doing is to include this launch file. I am going to be executing this launch file whenever I run this one. Okay, yeah, does it make sense? So far, so good. Are you following? Let me know here in the chat. Yes, perfect, nice, very well, very well. OK, so first of all, then we are including this launch file, which, as I have said, is going to start the Gazebo world. And I am doing also the same thing with this other launch file. So I am also including this spawn robot launch before launch.py. This other launch file that I am including here is the one which is going to spawn the robot into the world, into the Gazebo world. Yeah. So first, I start the Gazebo world. Second, I spawn the robot into the world. OK? So um, let's say that until this point, I'm doing nothing different than what I have done so far. Because with, the, with this, uh, with this um, launch command that we executed here, basically, we, we have done this. We have started the world and we have spawned the robot into the world, right? So, so far, 
Until this point, I am doing nothing different, okay? Now, from this point is, is where we, I am starting to add some extra things, okay? So here I am defining two new node elements, okay? So first of all, I'm going to spawn here the joint state broadcaster, see? So for doing this, you need to create a new node and run the spawner executable from the controller manager package, okay? So you have to use this spawner executable from the controller manager package. This executable, this spawner, is going to be in charge of spawning a new controller, okay? So in this case, I am spawning here the joint state broadcaster, okay? And also I create another one for spawning the joint trajectory controller, okay? So I'm going to be spawning the joint trajectory controller and the joint state broadcaster, my two controllers, okay? I'm going to be spawning them, loading them from the launch file, okay? Well, not still here. Here I'm just defining the, the, the node element, okay? But I'm not actually starting it yet. This is done right here. So whenever you create a launch file in ROS2, as you might know, you have to return a launch description element. Yes? Then here I am first calling start world to start the gazebo world. Second, I am calling spawn robot world to spawn the robot. Yeah, remember this start world and spawn robot world are these two variables that I define it here start world and spawn robot world. So here is where I am actually uh, calling them, let's say. So first, I start the gazebo world. Second, I spawn the robot into the world. Third, I start the joint state broadcaster controller, okay? Which I have defined it here, right? So now you might be asking, hey, uh, Alberto, but what about this robot controller spawner? And that's a very good question and very convenient, let, let me say. So for, for spawning this one, we are using a special element, which is this register event handler, okay? So we have different elements that you, we can do uh, in launch files, very interesting, which are contained inside these launch actions, okay? In this case, we are using this one, register event handler. So here, what we are doing is to create an event handler of the type on process exit. What does this mean? That we are going to do something when a process exits, when a process ends, right? So in this case, what I am defining here is that when the joint state broadcaster spawner process exits, so when I execute this process, which is to spawn the joint state broadcaster uh, controller, when this process finishes executing, I'm going to trigger an action. In this case, I'm going to trigger the other controller. See? So on exit of this process, I'm going to run this other process. So what is this doing? Basically, I am making sure here that I am going to start the robot controller spawner only after this, the joint state broadcaster controller has properly uh, spawned and the process has exited. Yeah? Do you understand this element here, what I am doing here? Is it clear? Does it make sense? So this is, this is uh, very good to, to, to control when you are going to be starting things, okay? Because otherwise it might happen that you are starting one controller uh, before the other one has finished loading and some problems might uh, erase from these situations, okay? So uh, this is very convenient for this uh, 
these situations, yeah? When we, we, we want to make sure that one process has finished it and then we are going to execute the next one. All right? Uh, Juan David says, perfect. Very well. Okay, so uh, that's it. That's it. Very, very simple, okay? You, uh, you can have a look if you want at these launch files, uh, but I'm not going to go over them, okay? Because it's not uh, the purpose of this. But uh, you are going to, you have all these launch files in case that you want to have a look into them. You are going to find them uh, right here, okay? So you can see what this, uh, in this case, the start world launch does, etc. Okay? In this case, um, yeah, I just wanted to create this uh, launch file. And as you can see, it's very, very simple, okay? So, uh, yeah, let's now test it, right? So, um, let me keep going down here. Yeah, so you are going to find here also in the notebook explanation of the launch file, what I have been explaining here. So, you can have a look if you want to, to everything uh, here in the, um, in the notebook. It's also explained. So, uh, now we are going to compile first of all, of course, and then we are going to, we are going to uh, launch this launch file to make sure that it's working as expected, right? Then uh, the first step before compiling is to make sure that we un install the launch directory, okay? We have crea created this new launch folder, so we have to install it in the system so that ROS2 is able to find it. So this can be done very easily by coming here to the cmakelists.txt file and then you can come down here to the install function and you are going to add here under directory the launch directory, okay? So in this case, we want to install two directories, launch and folder, and config, sorry, launch and config, which are the two directories that contain the files that uh, we have created, right? This one we created it today, and this one we created it in the previous class, in part one. So, um, so yeah, we make sure that we are installing the launch directory, and now, yeah, now we are ready to compile. So let's keep going uh, here, and let's run the commands here to compile. So very important, we have to come here to the root of the workspace, here, ROS2 workspace, don't compile anywhere else. Compile always in the root of the workspace here. Now we are going to run the Qualcomm build with the symlink install flag in this case. There we go. It's going to go very fast, you'll see. And finally, we are going to source. As always, after compiling, it's convenient to source. There we go. And uh, we are ready. So we are ready now to launch, to execute our launch file and to test if it works as expected. So let's execute this command here, which is going to, as you can see, oops, sorry, I didn't copy it properly. There you go. So ROS2 launch box car bring up and my robot launch pie. Yeah, so we are going to execute now the launch file that we have just created. So let's run this command. Let's see if uh, we have done a good work and everything works as expected. Okay, so things are looking uh, pretty good so far. Here I have the simulation which is being started. And here I can see the controllers that has have been properly loaded, right? So we have here the joint state broadcaster, which has been configured and started, and the joint trajectory controller, which has been configured and started as well, okay? So here, uh, the client of Gazebo doesn't want to start for some reason. Sometimes it gets bugged, okay? So uh, if this happens, let's do one thing, let's, so, uh, I don't know if uh, you are going to get the same situation. Probably for you it's going to work, but sometimes the client gazebo gets booted like this, as you can see. So if you get something like this, let's just you can just stop here the command, stop the process and relaunch it, and it should work, okay? Let's 
Sí, so now it loaded properly. So, um, so yeah, we have here our uh, simulation launched. The robot is properly spawned into the Gazebo world. And also my two controllers have been properly configured and started, right? So for instance, now, if I come here and run a ROS2 topic list, I'm going to see topics for the two controllers. First, I can properly see the joint states topic, right? And also, if I do an ROS2 topic echo, I'm going to be getting messages here. I should be getting messages here, and I am. So I am able to monitor, to see, to check the state of my joints. Perfect. So this means that the joint state broadcaster controller has been loaded properly. And I can also see some topics related to the joint trajectory controller right here, right? The joint trajectory controller, joint trajectory, and joint trajectory controller state. Yeah? So this means that my two controllers have been uh, indeed started properly. Okay, so I have done, we have done a good work with our launch file. <coughs> Perfect. So, um, yeah, now the last part of this class, what we are going to do here to, to finish, is to test the joint trajectory controller, okay? So we have seen that we are getting messages in the joint states topic. And now we are going to test our joint trajectory controller, okay? But this controller, it's a little bit special, okay? It's a little, it's a little bit special. I don't know if you know about this controller. It's very common in ROS, by the way. But it's a little bit special. Why? Because it provides two different types of interfaces. One interface is through this topic, joint trajectory controller, okay? So we can publish into this topic a trajectory message, a message of this type, of the type trajectory messages joint trajectory, okay? So we can have a look at this uh, ROS with uh, at this type of messages, if you want, with the ROS2 interface command. ROS2 interface show trajectory messages joint trajectory. So with this command, um, oh yeah, I am missing interface show trajectory messages message joint trajectory. Yeah, so you have to put this message here in between. And uh, with this, you can see the structure of this uh, message, okay? So as you can see, it's uh, a complex type. It has the header with the, with the uh, timestamp, the frame ID, and it contains a set of uh, arrays here of floats. It contains the joint names. Uh, you can send positions, velocities, accelerations. So it's a quite uh, complex uh, message, yeah? interface. So, um, but yeah, in any case, as I was saying, this joint trajectory controller, it's a little bit special because it provides two interfaces. The first one is, uh, the, well, actually this is the second one. It's the secondary one, okay? It's through this topic. So you can directly, be, you can directly publish messages into this topic in order to uh, execute a specific trajectory. Okay, but the main interface in order to interact with this controller is through an action, okay? So we can run here, for instance, the ROS to action list command, and we are going to see the action associated to this controller, which is this one. Joint trajectory controller follow joint trajectory, okay? This is the main interface that it's used in most of the cases in order to... Um, in order to talk, to interactuate with this controller, okay? For instance, for instance, if you know, this controller is very, very often used in manipulation for controlling uh, manipulators, robotic arms, okay? For sen sending trajectories to robotic arms. It's very, very commonly used in those kind of situations, okay? And it is uh, always uh, used 
through the action, which is this one, okay? Then, in order to test it, to test this controller that we have loaded, we are going to be also uh, communicating with this controller through the action, okay? Now, in this case, I have already, uh, we have already prepared here an script, which is this script, will steer.py. We have already created an script which is going to send a goal to this action server, okay? So you can find this script in this path. Home user, ros to workspace, src, boxcar, boxcar description, scripts. So you can come to this path here on the IDE, Right, I'm going to do the to do this right now. So Rust to workspace SRC boxcar boxcar description scripts. And here you're going to find this Python scripts a script will underscore steer.py. This is the script that we have prepared in order to send a goal to this joint trajectory controller action server. Okay? And uh, I'm not going to go into much details into uh, this code because this is uh, basically an action client and it's not the purpose of this class, but uh, we can go over it uh, quickly here. And uh, yeah, so basically this is an action client, okay? So as you can see here, we are defining the action client, which is going to connect with the action server, joint trajectory controller, follow joint trajectory, which is the action server of the controller, right? Then. Here we have the function send goal, which basically what's going to do is to send a goal to this action server, right? Then, as you can see here, we define the join names, first of all, which names it's going to control, which uh, joints it's going to control. So uh, the joints in this case are, of course, the wheels, the right wheel and the left wheel. And then I am sending uh, two trajectory points. And starting the, the starting point and the end point. The starting point is going to be 0, 0. And the end point is going to be defined by this angle variable. Okay? Then uh, we append the two points to the trajectory. And then we are going to send the goal down here. Okay? We send the goal. As you can see here, with the send goal async function. Okay? And then uh, here we have a couple of callbacks for the goal response. So what my code is going to do when I receive a response from the action server. And um, the get result uh, callback as well. And a feedback callback. Okay? In case that you want to, to publish any feedback. Here I have it commented, but you can publish feedback if you want. As... Uh, as you can do for any action, yeah? And then finally, I have here my main function where I am initiating the node and I am getting here the angle variable from the arguments, see? So I am getting the arguments here, I am capturing the arguments and I am going to use these arguments as the angle, yes? Because now, when I call the send goal function, I am providing these angles this angle value, yeah? This angle value, remember, it's the value that we are going to use here for the second trajectory point, okay? And this angle uh, value is defined as an argument, and in this case, it's defined in the launch file that we are going to use to execute this code, which you can find here inside the launch folder. It's named steering.launch.py, okay? This is the file that we are going to be executing, the launch file that we are going to be executing. So if you open it, you are going to see here, we are executing the will steer py script, yeah, the script that we have just re reviewed, and we are setting an argument of 0 0.5. So this is the value that we are going to give to the angle, to the second trajectory point. This 0 0.5, if you are asking, uh, is in ra radians, okay? It's a position value which is in radians, 0 0.5 radians, okay? So uh, the trajectory that uh, I'm going to execute for my wheels 
it's going to start at 0, 0, and it's going to end at 0, 0.5 radians. Okay? Great. So, let's execute it, right? So, let's test it. Then, for this, we are going to, uh, you have the command here, directly, rush to launch, boxcar description, steering.launch.py. Okay? So, if, if everything goes as expected, what we should see here is the wheels of my robot move, right? They are going to move from the position 0 to the position 0 0.5, right? So let's execute our script and let's see what happens. So let me execute it here. Let me put the simulation here so that I can see what's going on. So let me execute it. And now I should see the wheels. There you go, OK? So you can see how the wheels have rotated to the left, right? And I have controlled it. I have moved the wheels using what? Using my joint trajectory controller. Yeah? Make sense? Have you been able to have this working, the, the full demo, and to control the, the wheels through, through this script? Yes, no? Did you have any issue? Ricardo says that it works. Lidi says that, yes, it works. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. All right. All right. I'm, I'm glad that it worked for you as well. Okay, then, uh, yeah, so basically uh, that's it. So let me, let me, let me just... Uh, we have reached the end of the, of the class. So let me just remind you that uh, this, what we have covered in this uh, class and also in the previous one, so it's a very small part of what the Rush to Control fra framework provides, okay? So in case that you want to learn more, for instance, for instance, a very interesting subject is that we have not covered, uh, of course, we don't have time to cover everything in these classes. So a very interesting um, feature is this controller manager, okay? So, in case that you want to learn anything uh, extra, anything more, you want to get uh, more deep into ROS2 control, you can have a look at the full course that we have. Okay, this is not the course. <laughs> at the full course that we have in the academy about ROS2 control, okay? ROS2 control framework. Ross to control. There you go. Okay. This link here is not working, but uh, you you have the link also up here. Okay. This one is working properly. In, in case that you want to go directly, you have the link here. Okay, for the full course. And also, I am seeing here that um, that the rating system has been activated. Okay, so this rating system is so that you can rate this presentation. Did you like the open class? Did you think it was good? Uh, it was excellent. If you think it was excellent, then you can rate it with a five. If it was good with a four, if you didn't like it uh, at all, you can rate it with a one, whatever you want, okay? I'm going to rate myself uh, not with a five because uh, I, I always can do things better and things can always be done better. I'm going to give give myself four stars, okay? So you can select here your, your rating and send it so that we can get some feedback and know if you have liked this class, if you enjoyed it, and we can also use these, uh, these ratings for improving for next classes, all right? So please take a moment to, to, to give uh, a rate to the class and uh, and yeah, so I'm going to I'm going to end it uh, here as always. Thanks uh, a lot to all of you for being here with me uh, during this uh, class. I hope that you enjoyed the class, that you have learned 
something, which is the most important. And uh, yeah, I'm going to see you again next Tuesday with the next open class. And until then, as always, take care and keep pushing your Ross learning. Bye-bye.